All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. And uh, we have a UNLV basketball game coming up here in about, oh, 25 minutes or so against Boise State. Big game because I believe both teams are 5-4. and four. I don't listen to the radio very often, even though I'm on the radio, if that makes sense. But with that being said, I'm glad you're listening. So listening to a little bit of radio this morning, another talk show in town that talks sports. They're talking about UNLV hoops. And one of the hosts on the morning show says, quote, if we can't get Patino, Menzies has to stay. And when I heard that quote, I said, you know what? How can you do a radio show and say something so ignorant like that? It was one of the dumbest comments I've ever heard. And look, I talk a lot about Ray Brewer. I think he's a good dude. He writes for The Sun. But he is the biggest homer you can ever imagine. And because Nevada only lost by or won by 17, and I guess UNLV outscored them by five in the second half, he said that was something to hold your head ha- high on and, and give Menzies props, basically. I'm kind of paraphrasing. And w- without explaining how that happened, which was they, they shot a bunch of threes yeah. that just happened to go in. It's they some, they yeah. don't run an offense. It's somebody that either doesn't understand basketball or is drinking the Kool-Aid or maybe both. And I believe Ray Brewer is that guy. He's a nice guy. But let's get off of Ray Brewer here. Again, let's go back to these hosts. That's right. They said that if we can't get Patino next year, regardless of how the season ends this year, got to keep Menzies for another year. That is just... Again, that is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. And, you know, when you're a member of the media, you have a right to your opinion, but you also have a responsibility, a responsibility to be honest to your listeners, okay? And and I'm not calling myself God's gift to radio because I'm not. But all of us in this room, we say what's on our mind. We're honest. Doesn't mean we're always going to be right, but there is no chance. And I know the person who made this comment. Been around the game of basketball his whole life. He cannot mean that. He cannot mean that. He can't possibly believe that if we don't get Rick Pitino, that Menzies should stay. There are plenty of other coaches out there that we could get. And I get so fired up when I hear people say things like that because now we have a losing culture at UNLV. And then the fans hear stuff like that. And when the fans hear idiots make comments like that, idiotic comments, I should say, then they start reiterating that. Well, you know, maybe Menzies should stay. Maybe we could give him a two- or a three-year con- a contract extension. Look. I heard the same stuff with Dave Rice for years. I didn't like the Dave Rice hire from the get-go. I didn't like the Marvin Menzies hire from the get-go. I understand there were extenuating circumstances with UNLV. We should have gotten Beard. I get that. But with that being said, if we don't get Patino, we shouldn't just we should stop looking for another coach. Francois, you think that's your advice for Francois as a member of the media in this town? If Menzies loses every game the rest of the season, I don't think that's going to happen. But I don't think the season's going to end well. But that's what you think Francois should do. Well, guys, we tried to get Patino. We can't come up with the money. Let's just let Menzies come back next year. How idiotic is that opinion, Chris? It's just it's a joke. And then I'll go to JD. I mean, how do people say things like that on the radio? I'll play devil's advocate with you, Brian. Was he approaching it in a way where he wanted to make it a sports radio topic and just p- present that binary choice as to, you know, do we have this one, you know, heralded coach, obviously, in Rick Patino? And then if for some reason we can't get him, just go with the one. Because the obvious question is this, that I would present to, to both of you and to them as well, too, is that why just the two choices? Why, 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 you, know, there's, like, you just pointed it out. There are many other options that, that, could, be, that mm-hmm. could be beneficial to the UNLV basketball had- program if they go in that direction. Whether it's, whether it's a Steve Lavin, whether it's a Larry Eustacey, whether it's you know, name, name coach A, B, C, or D. That, like, there's all kinds of other options. So, it, to me, I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'm, I am aiming the question at you, Brian. Was it something that he was just trying to spark up conversation in regards to sports radio, or was it, it was it a definite statement of, you know, we either have to go with this Here's what or I got the that? Sense. I got the sense that his, his <laughs> statement was more along the lines of, well, if we can't get Patino, we're not going to get people in the seats. Let me tell you something. If you're going to win basketball yeah, it games, could have been taken out of context. That's possible. If you hire yeah. a coach, but let's let's be let's be real. Marvin Menzies' record against top 100 teams is three and 27. It's horrible. Three and 27. The guy has never won an NCAA tournament game at New Mexico State. I, I you know never. His players are now acting like him, and making making quotes like Brewer made in the newspaper that oh we won the second half by five or eight points. His sophomore starting point guard is now making statements like that. And yes, the culture is a totally losing culture. The problem with this article is it's a total disservice to the fan base and to, the, and to his listenership. Yeah, and this wasn't even an article. Uh, this, yeah, this was. was a, I'm sorry, the, the, yeah. about that statement in yeah, general. Right. Yeah. 
And it JD is. and Brian, did you guys bring that stat up a couple days ago that we saw mm-hmm. on Twitter in regards to Marvin Menzies and blowout games yeah. in the Mountain West? Yeah, give that stat. And, out. Uh, hey. and 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 every other coach basically in the last fifteen years at UNLV, and actually fifteen years. This stat go, is just go back, terrifying. Go back 10, ten to twelve years to Lon Kruger when Lon Kruger was head coach. Every other head coach that's been here since then is in the you know single digits in regards to so this, getting blown out by more than 17 points. The stat was, Here's a stat out there, people. It, head coaches at UNLV in their tenure since Lon Kruger has been the head coach, all the other coaches except for Marvin Menzies are at two or at three or at five in, 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 when losses in the conference by more than 17 points. Mm-hmm. Marvin Menzies is at 11. He's had 11 losses. And he's in been the here for West less than three more years. Than 17, and he's been here for less than three years. How long years. was Kruger here for? Uh, six or seven years. How yes. long was Rice I here for? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, Rice was here, was, I believe, was it four and a half years? And Dave so Rice? Menz has been here roughly 30%, 40% less, mm-hmm. but he has four times as many of those even losses. Even Todd yes. Simon. Even Todd Simon, I think there were 15 games, and he only had one game where he lost by that many. And you guys know as well as anybody, right? It's not like there's teams in in, 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 in those le- in those years in this conference that are like Nevada, right? right? That are ranked number six in the country. These are losses to teams that are, you know, probably in the bottom hundred in college basketball. Right. So, uh, like, you're, it's, UNLV has it's lost. Bad losses. But, but taking that into consideration, he's now saying the only coach, the only coach that can, <laughs> that can do better than that is Rick Pitino for the program. <laughs> I mean, that's, how do you? I mean, how do you even possibly in a million years make that statement? I even, think unless you just don't under unless you don't, don't know that. I think it's completely idiotic. If you don't know those stats, if you don't know how bad Menz has actually been, if you don't realize yeah. what he actually has done for the program, which is basically just nothing except make excuses at you this know, point. These are the type of people that UNLV. L- let me give you an example about UNLV. It frustrates me. Okay, there's a lot of things about UNLV that frustrate me. So they have this uh, great thing that Greg Maddox is involved in tomorrow night. Got this dinner tomorrow night. Uh, I'm sure you heard about it, Chris. It's a great, great dinner, uh, raising money for charity. It's awesome. Involves the UNLV baseball team. So I, I hit up the UNLV athletic department yesterday, and I asked them, hey, can we, can we get Greg Maddox on for a few minutes? I had to email them several times just to get a response back. I finally get a response back, and it's like four words. Greg is not available. Now, I know he went on another station, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But that's the response I get. I'm trying to promote one of their events. Okay, Then I email this person back who works in the UNLV Athletic Department for the baseball team. And I asked him, I said, okay, that's fine. Is there somebody else you can get me? I don't even care if it's somebody. I don't care if it's a no name. I don't, I'd rather get somebody like Greg Maddox. No response. Now, I'm honest on the air. I tell it like it is. But here I am trying to promote an event that they have on a 50,000-watt radio station. Okay, not a radio station where you can't hear it in Henderson or Summerlin. Yeah, there are some sports stations in town that are like that. Okay, this is KDWN. This is a huge station. And they don't even have I don't, the respect to even get back to me. That bothers me. By the way, our station can be, our show can be heard in yeah. Utah, Arizona, most of Nevada, and basically all of Southern California up to yeah. L.A. Four years ago, J.D., I don't even know if I ever told this story on the air. Four years ago, look, I... I put Dave Rice, I wouldn't say on blast, but I, I critiqued him. I critiqued the coach. I thought he was the wrong guy for the job, just like I think Menzies is the wrong guy for the job. So I did that consistently, okay? I had a former UNLV player come on my show. His name's Wink Adams. You remember him? He played for Lon Kruger. Great guy. Still lives here in the community. Hell of a basketball player. Great college career. So Wink comes on my show, and he starts putting the coaching staff on blast. And he wasn't being disrespectful about it. He was saying the same things that I say. Look, not fit to be a head coach. I don't know what they're doing on offense. They don't look like they play as hard as they should. Blah, blah, blah. I get an email from somebody within the UNLV Athletic Department. I'm not even going to say who it is because he's still over there. But I get an email from somebody critiquing my show. Basically saying, wow, you're not really promoting the UNLV basketball team. First of all, it's not our job to promote no. UNLV basketball. It's our job to talk about our it and critique it. accurately report yeah. based on what we actually think. Sure. So at that time, Tina Kunzer murphy was the athletic director. I took that email because I was pissed. I took that email, and I sent it to her, and she said she would take care of it. But, you know, those situations happen because I don't put up with the BS. So there's a couple people over there that probably don't like me, and I really don't care. I'm just to do my job to critique UNLV hoops, to say what's on my mind, whether I like or dislike something. And I'm telling you right now, the times where Tony Sanchez, for example, he comes on our show every week. I respect him a great deal. When he does something great, 
I'm the first person to, to point it out. But when he does something not so great, I talk about that too. Same thing with the basketball program. There's not been a lot of great things to talk about the last five years. I'm giving you those examples. And the reason why I give you those examples of the way certain people in the UNLV I've talked about have, have treated me particularly is because they expect – everybody to kiss their ass and say how great UNLV is, how great the basketball program is, how they just can't make any mistakes. It's not our job to do that, okay? But here I am trying to promote an event that they have tomorrow, well, and they don't get back to me. If you want us to do that, you better feed us better than CeCe's Pizza. Yeah, the food is, <laughs> the food hey, is look, awful. As, 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 I, I'd like to chime in on this because as a contributor and a friend of, to the Vegas Take, of course, J.D., yourself, along with Brian, I think what's refreshing to a lot of us out here in Las Vegas that, that get an opportunity to, to, to listen to this show is that you guys, quote-unquote, tell it like it is when it comes to UNLV basketball. And I think the reason – that you guys have a lot of credibility. And, and, and look, I've, I've listened to what you've just talked about, Brian, and you've, you've been able to air a, a kind of a grievance, basically, and J.D. as well, too, in regards to the professionalism of the UNLV program. But, but uh, I think people like a butt with you is that uh, you have a perspective, and a lot of things, and I talked about this with J.D. off the air, a lot of the stuff that you, that you talk about in regards to UNLV basketball has transpired. Right and has taken place. I told you, Dave so Rice that, wouldn't work that, out. That lends a certain credibility yeah. to you guys when it comes to sure. UNLV basketball. Now th- there may be people that don't like that. Okay, the, over over there at the, on campus. What is it that Jack that Nicholson don't like said? It. Jack so Nicholson said you can't handle the truth. Why. Yes, but yeah, you, Jack Nicholson. You, but you understand <laughs> what well, I'm trying Chris, to portray here. In right? all fairness, yes. I, I am a professional sports better and a professional handicapper. Mm-hmm. And Brian has a lot of experience with the game of basketball. Yeah, no, no doubt. Let me let me open up the phone lines at two five seven five three nine six seven zero two two five seven five three nine. UNLV basketball. Does anyone out there think I'm too harsh with UNLV basketball? Does anyone think that, you know, I, I want them to fail, which obviously is not the case. I want them to succeed. 257-5396. Let's start with Fernando. Fernando, thanks for calling in. How are you? What's up, Fernando? Hey, I'm good, guys. Um, first off, um, I just want to say um, a prayers and thoughts go out to Mr. Massey. That's right. Bob right. Massey passing away. I just saw him a few months ago at the Westgate. This is yeah. a guy who did a lot of national stuff, and, and he was a great attorney, and he did a great job on, on television, and he was, a, I guess you could call him a, a fixture, a legal fixture here in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And I just heard uh, Ron Futrell sent me a text message and told me about uh, Bob Massey's uh, passing. He is going to be a legend in this town. There's no question about it. Yeah, he was a longtime uh, family attorney. Um, what I wanted to say about you know, basketball was um, the administration has to make a decision, either – we're going to go for academics only and have good students or win basketball games. Mm-hmm. And I wish they would come out and let us know what they're going to do. Unfortunately, Fernando, good students are not going to equal people in the seats. Right. And that's not, and that's not and even true. You, you, could have, you could have good students like you have at St. Mary's and have a good developmental basketball coach, but if the coach can't develop the players and cater them to his system, it doesn't make a difference right. whether they're good students or they're good athletes, Fernando. Yep. I agree. Right, um, and um, you're spot on with the with the um, criticisms and the and the positive and the negative about the, the about the athletics there. And um, this is where I, talk, I keep I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but if we can't win in football and basketball, it's time to go to a different conference, West Coast Conference. Go to the WAC. Go to the Big West. I mean, can we go independent like BYU did? Now, the, I'll tell you the answer is win recruit better, coach better, and move to the Pac-12 where they should be. That's what I think they're waiting for. I think they're going to wait out a couple of years, wait to the stadiums build, because this is the last year mm-hmm. that the Rebels will be at Sam Boyd. Right. They're going to move into the new stadium for 2020. So maybe there might be something on the horizon where they might move into the Pac-12 and get that big conference and, and uh, the, money. And the Thomas and Mac is a very suitable arena. I was, I was there for the first time without walking through the media entrance, and it's great. It, there's TVs everywhere. There's plenty of places to eat. It's very secure. It's it's a nice. It, it's it's very. It's set up very very well. There's no reason that there should be any less than eight to ten thousand people at every single game. And there's, there's sometimes two to four. I know you guys saw the um the you know, football schedule. Football schedule. How many wins do you see out of there? I only see four. Uh, I see more than that. I think they will be bowl eligible. I, I, I'm going to say at least six. Fernando, yeah. I'm going to say I'm going to say seven to nine. Tony Sanchez is a very good coach. And he brings a lot back on this team. I don't know. I think the word's out, J.D., on whether he is a really good coach. I think he's a really good guy. I think if he's a really good coach, he absolutely has to get them to a bowl game next year or he's got to be gone. Fernando, would you agree with that? Oh, yes. Yeah, he has to be boy eligible, but I'll, I'll, I see four and eight. 
in 2019. I'm going to tell you right now. Guys, take care. Thank you, Fernando. I'm going to tell you right now, Chris. I know you would agree. If 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 Tony Sanchez goes four and eight, there is zero chance that he comes back right. next year. And- and if that happens, regardless of whether how bad the program is, moving to that new stadium, a great, yeah. a, a very big, a big name coach will be interested and will be the next UNLV head coach. Well, yeah. Look, it's always tough to play the schedule game. I took a look at it as well too. I see five wins on the schedule. The question I have for you, JD, as well as Brian, is this: Do they get one of those wins on the road against those quality opponents? And what I mean yes. I, is Vanderbilt or Northwestern. The reason why I say yes because I think I think it all comes down to whether if it's healthy, if they're healthy. Right. Uh, if yeah. if if our if Armani Rogers is healthy, yes, I do. So we're gonna get to some more phone calls. We're getting some more calls on this UNLV stuff. Let's start with uh, Shad. I, th- I believe you're next. Thanks for calling in. How are you? What's up, Shad? Hey, I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? Listen, doing good. I've been uh, a Las Vegas native. I wasn't born here. Born in California, but lived in Vegas for over 30 plus years. And I grew up. My big brother had uh, box seats to watch uh, UNLV 88, 89 season. So I got to watch the glory years wow. and. Uh, you know, Jerry Tarkinian and all the all the uh, amazing players that came after. And the thing that obviously happened is an amazing coach, and obviously some some great draft, uh, or not draft, but some scouting that brought in some great players. And that's what's going to make the difference for us to be able to change. And as excited as I am to see, uh, you know, starting off the season and in a couple of weeks in our conference and having some hiccups here and there, it's hard to get behind them because I don't feel like they're going to be you know, strong behind come to fruition. I just just curious to know because obviously I in listening to your show, you have a lot of knowledge about what's going on and I love hearing, you know, what what's bad but what's good. How can we change where we're at? Well, that's a good. A it's a good question. Recruiting. Yep, it's a good question, Chad. I think your your uh, phone is going a little bit in and out, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to let you go. I appreciate you calling in. I'm gonna try to answer your question best I can. As far as what they're going to change, what's going to happen, I think the only way that you the UNLV basketball program in in a few years gets back to where Lon Kruger left it off is if we get another basketball coach and a capable basketball coach who can not only recruit but can coach. I have a few people in mind. I've had some of those people on our show. I don't make, you know, any squarms about it. I mean, I I can tell you right now, I think Larry Eustace would be a fantastic fit for this job. I think Rick Pitino would be an absolute no-brainer if they could afford him. And there's a few other guys out there that I have in mind as well. But those are the top two guys. One guy that would cost a lot of money and another guy that would be cheap. Let's take another phone call at 257-5396. Hopefully Scott is not on an Obama phone. Scott, thanks for calling in. How are you? What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, um, who, who are the other names you have in mind? For that UNLV job. Well, right? I, like I said, Rick Patino is number one. Now, I think it's going to be really tough to get this guy for a lot of different reasons. The FBI thing is certainly over everyone's head in the NCAA investigation. Also, you're going to have to come up with a lot of money. And that's assuming if Rick Patino would want to take the job, which I think he would. Scott, I don't think that's going to happen. My guy, maybe you could call me biased. I'm friends with the guy. I think he's a phenomenal coach and he'd take this job cheap, is Larry Eustacey. He's a guy that was the Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year two years ago. He's a former National Coach of the Year. He would bring in Mark Workentine. If you know who Mark is, Mark would sure. be his assistant. Mark would be his assistant coach. Mark would bring the players and, that we need and, to get back. Mark is actually – he won the GM of the Year in the NBA. He's right. Right, right now he's the, yeah. the GM for the Oklahoma City Yeah, Thunder. and Mark wouldn't mind me saying that. I'm telling you right now, Scott – I think Larry would be a no-brainer. Now, I get it. Some people have a problem with him swearing at players, and God forbid a coach throws a soda can in a locker room. The guy is a phenomenal coach. That's just the bottom I'll line. You, I'll tell you who's sniffing around that, that job. Who's that? It's Steve Lavin. You know, I just texted I just texted Steve yesterday. He Steve's going to come on our show next week. So I will ask him I will ask him that question for you, Scott. Here's the thing about Steve Lavin. First of all, I think he's a great guy. I love Steve to death, number one. And he's battled cancer and all that stuff, and he came back, and he's a, he's a fantastic uh, commentator on the radio on Fox Sports. I think he's a fantastic recruiter. I think his X's and O's, as far as coaching, might be a little suspect. And, and you know what? That, I'm just being honest with you, Scott. That's how I feel about the guy. Another name is Kevin Kugler. I'm not sure he's ready for the job yet, but he's definitely— Who? Kevin Kruger? Sorry, Kevin Kruger. Oh, Kevin yeah. Kruger. Yeah. Not sure he's ready for the job, but he's definitely someone that would be. You're talking about Lon Kruger's, exactly Lon son. Kruger's son, former Rebel. Right. Yeah, Scott, that's right. my take on that. Yeah, I like it. Hey, right. here's three things about UNLV. The average fan probably knows, doesn't know, it doesn't matter. Sure. Number one, UNLV, if you talk amongst coaches, and I'm sure you've had conversations with, there's three things about UNLV. Number one, you can get anybody into school. You know what you need to get into UNLV, guys? What's the that? Polls. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and you, you need to spell your name right at the top of the application, right? There's That's it. Number two, it's right across the street from the airport. There's 25 Division One teams in California. Half of them have to sit in traffic to go to the airport. You Very true. LMU. Okay, so when you want to go to a road game at UNLV or go recruit, you get in a van and you go 200 feet and you're at the airport. Meaning number that there's three, no excuses of getting good good recruits. I agree with you. Right. Go ahead, Scott. And the last thing is there's outstanding facilities at UNLV. Those You're right. All have their individual pass to get in the Mendenhall Center. There you go. Whatever they want at two thirty yep. in the morning. Scott, that is such a great point. You know who brought us Mendenhall? Lon Kruger, and we miss him dearly. And there's a lot of idiots out there that wanted him out of town and wanted Dave Rice in. Those people have no credibility. And Scott, I know you're not one of those guys. Thanks so much for calling in, Scott. We appreciate right. it. Thank you. Right. Call Scott. Let's uh, two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Dave. Dave, thanks for calling in. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the show. Sure. Hey, you know one of the things I've been in Las Vegas for 15 years. And I have raised my kids to be Rebels fans. And I'm telling you, uh, I love UNLV. I get so frustrated at the game day experience and communication that I've had um, with uh, UNLV, the athletic department, especially. And this may seem a little bit like with the kids club and getting the kids involved. Um, I, I don't know if it's uh, um, a situation where they just have students that are, that are involved and they just don't know how to do this kind of stuff. But, man, I've been other places, and, and it's just – it's a lower class. You're right. Experience. Dave, Dave, I do not disagree with you, and I respect your opinion. You know, let me give you an example, Dave, of what you're talking about. Let's talk about the Rebellion, for example. I have reached out to the Rebellion, and I've criticized them at times because you got, like, what – there, I think someone made the joke. Was it you, J.D., that made the joke? There's actually uh, more letters in the rebellion than students at games. Um, yeah, but, I, I was actually yeah, I was at was a, a game, joke. and there was about yeah. eight students in the student but section. Da- but Dave, yeah, that's funny. Dave, I bring up the rebellion because I've offered them to come on because I want to promote more kids going to games. You know what Francois told us when she came on the show a few weeks ago? She told us that she has this program set in place to keep students on campus so they don't drive to Henderson or Summerlin because they're too lazy to come back for a game. Now, to me, that is just ridiculous. And that should be the last thing on Francois's mind. Yeah, I, I've just had I've had experiences where um, I, I have tried as best I can to get my kids to be excited about UNLV, to grow up, to, to go to the university. We're 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 on the program, but we we're out paying for college right now. I want them to go to UNLV, and I support yeah. our, uh, UNLV. But man, it's tough. D- you know, d- the other thing I wanted to ask you about was sure. um, something that I've been just bitter about for a long time, I guess, because I really liked him as an NBA coach. But uh, that really upset me that we uh, didn't put a uh, get a good push for George Carl. You know, um, I heard that name a lot, Dave, and I certainly, don't get me wrong, I certainly think George Carl would have been a better situation than what we're in now. I think George Carl would probably do a good job. The only issue I have with George, I, I think he would get guys that would recruit. He'd put. Uh, when was the last time George Carl coached in the college game? That would be my only issue. I'm not saying it wouldn't work out. But I'm, that would that's my only concern there. Dave, let me ask you a question. So you're the type of guy that the UNLV Athletic Department should be going after to kind of bring back and to buy season tickets. So what does Francois have to do in your mind to bring you back? Well, I, I tell you, I have thought about buying season tickets. I can't get over the amount that I would pay for the PSL okay. in, in relationship to the uh, quality of the game that's on the floor right now. That's valid. Uh, I think I, uh, you're absolutely right. I think that the, the quality, uh, if you ask Marvin Menzies, he says he has a great product, but I think you and I, Dave, would disagree with that. Hey, Dave, I appreciate you calling in, my man. Thank you for your perspective. Dave, great thank call. You, yeah, thank you. Bye. You know, those are the type of guys and women that the UNLV Athletic Department should be going after, and, right? And programs like Michigan and Ohio State and Iowa and USC, they have hundreds of thousands of families like like that with Dave and a couple of kids that are supporting their program. UNLV doesn't have anywhere near that, and that's a huge problem. And you know what? I don't blame people like Dave for not going to games. He makes some very valid points there. The product is not very good. It's a paycheck product right yeah. now, I'm telling you. And we're going to talk about this tomorrow. If UNLV loses to Boise State tonight, and by the way, that tip-off is in a few minutes here, that will be four in a row. And then they come home this weekend to play a very good team in Fresno State. Hudson, who was our assistant mm-hmm. coach, who nobody ever brings up, I think he would have done a good job here. He's not a big name. He's doing a hell of a job in year one at Fresno. This could be a five-game losing skid, and this is a tough task tonight. I think they should be in this game against Boise State. Boise State, not very good. But again, it's another game on the road. I don't know what's going to happen. Chris, what do you think? Jekyll and Hyde team in Boise State. They've had you know opportunities to go on the road in conference and have played well and have and beaten 
beaten decent teams in, in the Mountain West. So I, I would expect that Boise State should be formidable tonight, particularly sitting at home against a uh, UNLV squad that that basically let's let's be honest about it, it they're reeling right now. It's not it's Is not there, it's not a uh, uh, a quality product right now on the court. Any chance, Chris, if they lose tonight and they lose to Fresno State on Saturday, let's just say they lose by double digits right. to Fresno, which could happen. Mm-hmm. Any chance that they they get rid of him? Absolutely we, not. No, you don't think so? that's not going to be transpire whatsoever. It was bantered about a little bit on social media a few, a few days back that uh, that that could happen, and and a couple people tried to try to give pos- positive reasons if, if it yep. did go down mm-hmm. that it would be for the program. But I don't see it okay. happening, given you know the Fair absolute enough. debacle that took place with with Dave Rice. Fair enough. Well, C U N always appreciate it when you take some time to uh, join us. We're going to be heading across the street and, mm-hmm. and catch uh, the UNLV game. See see if they can get the W. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for calling, and we appreciate it. We mix it up here, politics sports, you name it. We talk about it on the show, and we try to do do it as honest as we can. Tomorrow on the show, Mike Babcock from TMZ Sports, Johnny Katz from the Review Journal. J.D. Sharp's grandfather is going to make a special appearance on our show tomorrow. We're going to talk a little politics with him. So that's going to be interesting, right? Uh, uh, Chris, you got to yes, listen. Yes, an that. educator who's been has experience with Dreamers, so yes, that's going to be a good thing. That'll be fun. Thanks for joining us, everybody. The legend himself, Ken Thompson, coming up next on the Vegas Take. Thanks for joining us. 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K Don.